Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, for those of you who have been following this series, um, I have been building my own sweet little computer, um, which was planned to be a 6502 compatible computer with, um, well, a little bit of I.O. hardware, um, a display and a keyboard, and maybe mouse, joystick and stuff like that. Uh, like so many others um, these days, I failed miserably and in the end I came up with this. Uh, this is basically an adapter to connect a 65CO2 to a Raspberry Pi 02W. And um, it's not exclusive to the 02W, you can also connect a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, this is what this little thing back here is, it's a Raspberry Pi 3 um, with one of these boards strapped to the back. Uh, shortly later, I set out and I tried to find some supporters um, because, well, I know some things about hardware and I, saw, I know some things about software, but making an operating system myself and uh, getting all of this going myself was kind of hard and uh, a lot of work. Uh, but basically, I did not get a lot of positive feedback. Uh, most of the people that I contacted um, were pretty quick to tell me that it was probably never going to work and if it worked it would perform really bad. Well I didn't let that deter me and um, after having built a few of these and after having gone through um, a few buggy hardware uh, implementations I built uh, this one here which is uh, the whole same thing uh, but this one uh, also has um, expansion ports and uh, the 6502 bus is basically on the expansion ports and you can either stick um, your Raspberry Pi um, th to the top of it or you can hide it at the bottom. It also comes with a power in and a power switch um, because well they're just nice. Now over the time I developed the base software um, to simulate all the hardware that a 6502 would usually find on its bus, um, namely memory and uh, some I.O. chips. And uh, this worked quite well. And within a couple of weeks I was able to uh, emulate AVIC-20 at about 1 MHz, 800, 800 kilohertz to 1 MHz. Um, so really close to the original frequencies and an Apple II and things like that. It was really really easy to work with this and um, I tried to get into more complicated things like running the x16 core um, on the CPU and emulating all the hardware um, which most of it is uh, is the Vera and uh, the the two vias that are on here or that would be on here if they were a C16. And uh, that also worked out really, really well. And it was pretty easy to implement. Um, and over the past weeks, I was actually getting ready uh, to take this to um, some of the German maker fairs. Uh, but unfortunately, well, this isn't the season for maker fairs. And uh, well, this isn't the season for any real sponsored events right now. So it's just not going to happen. So I thought I'd make a short video and uh, show you the state, of affair, the state of affairs and where I'm at developing things right now and um, how good the performance has got because um, we've made some breakthroughs or I have. Now I do have the two implementations uh, either with uh, the Raspberry Pi 0 to W, uh, which is running at 1 gigahertz, or with the Raspberry Pi 3, which is running at 1.4 gigahertz. Uh, apart from the frequencies, uh, most of the hardware on the two Raspberries are basically identical. They have the same number of uh, GPIO ports, which for some 
strange coincidence is exactly the, the right number that you need to uh, support a 6502 and um, they can work with the same power supply and everything it's just that the one is slightly faster and the other one has slightly awkward ports now I have my basic test program running on this and uh, I'm just going to give it a spin and uh, we're going to watch um, how fast it's going to go. It's nothing, it's doing nothing but um, a simple loop um, jumping onto itself. So basically it's just reading and writing memory um, from its simulated uh, memory cores. So let's go. It's now working and we can see that it is actually um, executing code and the simulation is triggering the clock line. And if we take a look at the frequency here, um, you can see that it is... Uh... Oh, now it stopped. It's a pretty nice 5.1 megahertz. Um, on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, it is pretty much exactly 4 megahertz. But we know that the one is faster than the other. Uh, you can uh, overclock the um, Raspberry Pi Zero, and that gives you a little bit um, more speed. Now, how fast does this actually work when when running more than just a loop to itself so we can look at the uh, vic 20 emulation and we can just start the simulation for that and um, it comes up pretty quickly and uh, as you can see the the actual blinking cursor is way faster than it should be um, but on our clock we can see that the read cycles to memory and write cycles are still the same speed only io is slower because um, uh, the emulation is is taking clocks and it's it's stretching them a little bit um, so we have five megahertz on read and write to memory and we have an overall frequency of 4.2 megahertz for a vic 20 core and that is um pretty speedy now we can also take a look at the x16 core uh, which has not been ported to r40 yet it is still um, it is from the master branch of uh, of r38 um, and it's about three months old or so um, and we can run the same thing um, over there and we do get the uh, commander x16 basic v2 prompt and uh, we can see that uh, we still have largely the same um, read and write speeds to our memory um, but because the the simulation for the vera chip and the uh, via chips is still cycle bound to the um, emulation of the uh, of the of the memory core so the bus is still running all of the clock synchronously uh, we're only getting a uh, speed of about 2.8 to 3.2 um, megahertz uh, but that is still pretty respectable I think um, given the fact that all of this uh, is running over the GPIO lines of one Raspberry Pi and um, it is actually working really well with the X16 core because uh, most of the IO that it's doing um, is already programmed to be asynchronous so it works a lot better with uh, with an implementation like the one I have here um, if I do the same for the uh, VIC 20 I get a lot of problems with timing because uh, the VIC 20 knows that it's running at 800 megahertz or or 900 megahertz or something and um, the 
the Commander X16 uh, emulation core just, just doesn't care. Um, things like sound, um, they don't work very well right now and, and they need to be disconnected. But apart from that, uh, I'm really, really happy with the way that things work. And um, if we load Petsky Robots, uh, you can actually see how fast this thing is running. Um, the countdown would be a lot slower on uh, on the standard machine, um, but the whole I/O is um, is not optimized to the speeds that it's running at right now, which is fine. And it, I think you can tell from the sound it's really messed up because it's running way too fast, way faster than it thinks it should be running. Yeah, so um, basically from from a development standpoint um, that's where I'm at right now um, I have found a lot of performance um, on the Raspberry Pi I have been able to do a lot of um, optimization regarding memory access and and simulated hardware access and um, now if I if I start um, making all of the calls to the simulated hardware asynchronously um, meaning that it, it, it gets handed over to another hardware core on the Raspberry Pi very much like it would be on real hardware um, then the whole thing is going to become even faster and this is still just running plain C code uh, we've made some tests with um, with assembler just trying to pulse the lines and, and, and reading and to read back uh, some of the IO from the GPIO and um, using that we would be able to go at about 10 megahertz but I'm not even sure that I want to go that way uh, because I want this thing to be easy to read and easy to understand uh, but the the speeds that we can run with this thing are just amazing um, I would have never thought that I would have broken 4 megahertz this easily. And uh, I, I really like it. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of the development. And um, yeah, this is not the end of the line. Uh, there's, there's still a lot to do. Um, I want to get into um, making a, a real X16 core for this um, with, with a real um, Vera emulation and not a uh, a cycle correct simulation on the chip but more or less i want to rebuild um the front end uh to the point where it where it really performs and um then we can take a look at if we want to use the whole screen um there's there's just so much that can be done with this thing and um, yeah, it's, it's a really nice platform and it is super easy to extend. So um, taking, taking a uh, VIC-20 core, uh, it is super easy to make your own um, video interface chip. It's super easy to make your own IO hardware. You can, have, um, you can have accelerated things running on the, um, on the ARM core and uh, just connect it back to the um, 6502. So this opens um, this opens doors that were basically shut for a long time. You can you can have hardware on a 6502 that that you wouldn't think of um, 20 years back. So it's really cool. Well, that's it. Um, that's all I have to show right now. And um, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you're interested in getting your hands on the software, um, I will be updating Git pretty soon. And uh, if you're interested in getting onto the hardware, it is available on EasyEDA uh, on, their, on their website. Um, so is the, the, uh, the development board. And um, it is like really easy to reproduce. And um, the costs are really, really limited. I mean, a one PCB is uh, less than a dollar if you order 10 of them. 
and uh, S6502 is still around 10 to 15 dollars uh, the only thing that is hard to get right now although they're when you when you can get them they're not expensive um, those are the Raspberry Pi 2 um, 02 so uh, we're looking at an investment when I made this of uh, of under forty dollars for one of these boards and um, that is uh, that was where I wanted to go and um, it's definitely uh, a really really cool little development system and it also works really well with uh, with all the cores that that had a 6502 because you could just simulate everything on here okay that was it uh, thank you very much for watching um, and uh, have a good time bye bye